He is the sprinting. <laughs> so what are we going to name this sled? Psst, I couldn't help overhearing. How about this for the name for your sled? The Silver Lining Film and Media Review. <laughs> I got like a two dollar hooker. <laughs> I ain't come up with that. <laughs> That's my mother's name. Dude, your mom's name is Silver Linings Film and Media Reviews? That's awesome. Cool Runnings is a fantastic film that just makes you laugh and feel good and leaves you a bit inspired as well. It also has one of the most truly useful philosophical lines that I've ever heard in a movie. I'll talk more about that at the end of the review. Although not every aspect of Cool Runnings lines up 100% with the actual story, there are enough facts uh, from Cool Runnings to leave you feeling pretty inspired by the men themselves who started the bobsled team. That actually happened. You know, that's enough to keep me from starting my own bobsled team. Well, that and skill, energy, money, strength, intelligence. You know, but other than that, I would totally start my own bobsled team. Something that this film does really well, actually, is all of the main actors. That's uh, Leon, Dougie Doug, Malik Yoba. Raleigh Lewis, and of course the incomparable John Candy, they all have characters who go through at least some, some sort of growth period in the film. And although they don't sort of, they're not all equal, right? Some grow a lot more than others. They all grow enough and have enough of a story arc that you become invested in them. And in, in all honesty, the more invested you become in these characters, the more you sort of root for them to do well and root for them to win. Spoiler alert, though, they don't win the gold. Now, I want to focus my review on two specific aspects of this film that I find to be either incredible learning experiences and or inspirational for us. The first one involves Malik Yoba's character, Yul Brenner. That is a fantastic name. Yul Brenner is the kind of person who's no-nonsense. Reminds me a bit of Charles Oakley, for those of you who are NBA fans and a little bit older. He's no-nonsense. He doesn't believe in letting others get in his way to stop him from achieving his dreams. And he has an incredibly big dream. Malik Yoba wants to take his gold medal winnings and sort of invest in himself and, and ultimately purchase what he thinks is this incredible palace that turns out to be... Buckingham Palace, which is an incredible palace, as he thinks. The problem, of course, is that it's currently occupied, I think, by the British royal family. So not very likely that he's going to be able to purchase his dream home. Now, when some of the teammates learn that Yul Brenner wants to purchase Buckingham Palace, this, of course, you know, creates a bit of mockery. Except for one teammate. His teammate Junior, who is sort of mocked throughout the entire film, mostly because it, it is kind of his fault that they weren't able to qualify for the, you know, track and field Olympics. But Junior is used to being mocked, and he knows how sort of hurtful it can actually be. So when Yul Brenner takes his picture of Buckingham Palace that he used to carry with him wherever he went, when he crumples it up and tries to throw it away, Junior picks it back up and gives it to him and says, you go out and you go get your Buckingham Palace. Now, I love this scene because dreams, the, the ones that are big enough to change lives and or alter the trajectory of the human race, dreams of this magnitude should be big enough to be laughed at. If your dreams are not sort of big enough to be laughed at or mocked by others, then chances are your dreams are not big enough. Don't be afraid to dream and to dream big. And don't be afraid to be laughed at for it either. Now, the second aspect of this film that I want to discuss is the relationship between Irv, the 
bobsled team coach, played by John Candy, and Doris, played by the actor Leon, who is sort of the team leader, if you will. The relationship that these two men have is kind of a mentor-mentee relationship. You see, Irv has been in the Olympics before and actually won two gold medals in bobsledding. However, his legacy has been marred by the fact that it was found that he was cheating. He had been hiding weights inside the front of the bobsled in order to make it go faster. You see, that's how you're supposed to do it, not the way that I did it. I actually put the weights all on one side because I thought it would... Well, pretty much. It wasn't smart. I gotta learn physics. You see, what I find interesting about this is that Irv represents the idea of someone who establishes winning as a culture, a personal culture, right? The difficult part about that is you end up prizing winning so much that it sort of stunts your maturation as just a basic human being. Because if you haven't already learned by the time you're about 12 years old that you're going to suck at some things, yeah, chances are life is going to be quite difficult for you, and you probably will resort to things like cheating in order to win all the time. Doris almost follows in the footsteps of his coach here. He sees how well put together the Swiss team is, the Swiss bobsled team, right? And he essentially alters the culture of his entire team in order to try to become them. And instead of making his team better, he ends up just sort of throwing everybody off, trying to be something that he's not. You see, that sort of winning as personal culture is not really in Doris. And when he tries to adopt it here, it just sort of blows up in his face. He learns from his teammates that they can't be Swiss, right? They, they're Jamaican, that's what they are, and that's who, what they need to embrace. You never go full Swiss unless you're a cheese. Or maybe from Switzerland? Yeah. Then I think it's okay to go full Swiss. Or an army knife. And that takes us to our silver linings lesson for today, actually. So what is it? Well, Cool Runnings is certainly not a philosophical film by any stretch of the imagination. And yet I find that it has one of the most useful most impactful lines of pure human wisdom that I found in any movie anywhere. The night before the big bobsled run happens, Doris asks Irv, basically, why did he cheat? And Irv explains again that idea of he had established that personal winning culture, and then that sort of drove him to, to feel the need to win at all things. Doris can't believe that Irv would throw away everything that he had worked for just to, to cheat. And that's when Irv tells Doris the following. A gold medal is a wonderful thing. But if you're not enough without it, you'll never be enough with it. This line has stuck with me since the first time I watched the film, and it periodically comes back into my mind in certain moments of my life, when I start to feel like, if I just had that, or if I just buy this, I will finally be happy or feel complete. And that's almost never the case with human beings. We're always drawn to this idea that if we just had that one more thing, it would somehow complete us. But whenever we're looking toward external sort of ideas and objects to help fix something that's internally within us, it rarely ever turns out well. The truth is, if you can't see the value in who you are already, there is no magical external item or idea that's going to fix that for you. You're going to have to begin with your own two hands and your own mind. Only after you accept that you are valuable because you're alive and because you have value to those around you, only after you are able to accept that can you get on a genuine pathway for experiencing happiness and feeling fulfilled. So that when you do win your Olympic gold medal, you can truly enjoy it. Because 
You never really needed it. 